new products this week. Uh, don't forget, we are operating safe, smart, and uh, we've been squeaky clean. We've been doing this for five months, and we're good at it. <laughs> um, we do a lot. Every, you know, I know the temperature because I'm on the list that because we do each everybody's temperature. temperatures. Yeah. Everybody, I know everybody's temperature. Like, oh look, they're a little colder today. So we all have our temperature that we do to make sure we're okay when uh, we get to the office. Okay, uh, first up. Okay. So we have a couple new stemifications. So people have been noticing, hey, old breakouts from Adafruit are being uh, revamped and updated to uh, use the Stemma QT format. Uh, almost all of them are about 0.7 by 1 inch, and they have two Stemma QT connectors on each side. This is a, basically a quick compatible board. It just has level shifting and voltage regulator built in so that you can use it with any board from a Raspberry Pi to an Arduino Uno, anything in between. Um, so this week you've got the SI7021. It's a very nice humidity and temperature sensor from Scilabs. Now a uh, STEMI QT format for easy plug and play. We also have the List 3DH. This is an oldie but goodie. People love this accelerometer. I love this accelerometer from ST. We use it in a ton of boards. It's got tap detection. It's, you know, uh, got... Uh, you know, triple access. It's got uh, two, four, eight, and sixteen uh, G range. Uh, sorry, two, four, and eight G range. Um, at I squared C. You can change the address and now in STEMI QT format, so you can plug and play it. So lovely with all of our other STEMI QT boards that we have over fifty of. All right, next up. Okay, next up. Very small NeoPixels. These went through the shrink ray. These are two millimeter by two millimeter NeoPixels. Um, they're compatible with all the NeoPixel code that's all over the internet, but they're extremely small, which is great because uh, I like to shove these into dev boards and the 5x5 five five millimeter and even the 3.5x3.5 millimeter are sometimes a bit big. Now, you're, they're not going to be as bright because they're smaller, but uh, they still pack a punch and they're NeoPixely. Uh, speaking of which, we also have another variant of NeoPixels, the side light NeoPixels that people may have seen on a couple boards, including the Halloween M4, um, also going to show up in a couple badges. These are interesting because they're side mounted um, and they're kind of like rectangular. So they're, they don't take up a lot of space. Um, uh, they come in a strip and you can uh, solder paste them on. You can solder them very carefully with a fine tip um, soldering iron. And as you can see, they emit light from the side and they're nice and bright. And I thought I would also show them on the overhead. Let's see, get a sense of how big they are. Okay, so these are much yeah, smaller. I, can also zoom in I know, but these digitally. are so small. Okay, so these are the individual NeoPixels, um, and you can see they are just like already, these are only two by four millimeters. Yeah, I would back out a little bit. Back out a little bit. And back out, and then. And then Go this it. way. Yeah, focus and then zoom in. There it's you trying. You can yeah, see you the can little chip. Yeah, you can move it over a little bit. Yeah, you can yeah. see the chip inside. And then yeah. on the bottom. Move it around a little bit. Get in, get in. Yeah, sorry, there you go. Okay. It's, it's yeah. tough because okay. they're, they're so small. There you go. Yeah. Um, you can see the yeah. four pads on the bottom. Yeah, then flip it on the, put one on the side. Oh. Okay. It's so small. There you go. Yeah. All right, so it's one on the side. And then I also have the, the really tiny ones. Let's see. I want to see how, 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 it's tough to, it's tough, it does, yeah. it's like, what are you doing, why, why is it small? So, okay, and then these one, are one even human, smaller. One human finger, just to give you an idea. Yeah, and these are the two millimeter by two millimeter ones. Okay. So these are even, a little, bit. a little bit. These are even smaller. Yeah. So these are pick and placeable. You could saw them by hand if you're very, very careful, or hot air. I will say that the side light ones, they don't hot air very nicely with a hot air gun. Of course, you can reflow them, but they do. Uh, the plastic does get a little melty. So if you do hot air them, uh, just be fast. Either way, uh, they're four pins, power, ground, uh, data in and data out. You can chain as many as you want and use any NeoPixel or WS281X code you like. All right, so that's two new NeoPixel variants. All right. All right, next up we have um, a low-cost... Uh, fingerprint sensor. So we already have stocked a fingerprint sensor that's very similar to this, um, but we found a version that's about half the price. Uh, it has a little bit less memory, but it seems to work just fine, and it comes with a plug-and-play cable. 
So if you want to add biometric sensing, I think you can record up to like 128 fingerprints. Uh, we've got Arduino and CircuitPython slash Python code, so you can use it with Linux or Raspberry Pi or Arduino, what have you, anything in between. All right. Okay, next up we have two metal buttons, and these are toggle buttons. So as Jelly's safe hands are showing you, you can press the button and it stays locked on, and then you press it again and it releases. So it's kind of an on-off button, not a momentary button. Uh, and it's got a beautiful RGB LED ring in the center. Uh, it's rated for six volts, so you can use five volts just fine. Um, and uh, you, you know, you have one common anode and then uh, three common, three cathodes, one for R, G, and B. And on the bottom, you have a common, a normally open, and normally closed contact. We also have a version in fashionable Adafruit Black. Same thing. It's the same size, 16 millimeter. Um, it's a toggle on off with an RGB ring, but in a cool, sleek black color. I think I will. Yeah, I have a demo here so I can show on the overhead what they look like. So this is uh, the button. It comes with a nice um, hex nut, so you just drill a hole in, and you can see it can be like up to like a half inch thick. Uh, you press the button, it stays on. You press it again, it releases. On the bottom, you've got a bunch of contacts. I'm using our Quick Connects for easy contact. They're just spade, or you can solder to them. Um, these are the four RGB, again, one common anode, three cathodes for R, G, and B, and then three contacts for the switch. And then if I can find the micro USB power, you can uh, PWM it any color you like. So I think it'd be kind of cool, like when it's off, it can be, you know, yellow, and then when it's on, it's uh, green. Um, so you can get creative. And uh, we already have momentary versions of this button. So this one is the on off version toggle switch button. Okay. okay. Next up, we still have more. Lots we more. got a lot more. Okay. Saola, the ESP32 S2 dev boards. So we actually have uh, CircuitPython support for this board because we're using it for ESP32 S2 development. Um, this board is a you know, breadboard friendly, it's got a Warover module on the uh, top side there, and the Warover is an ESP32 S2. I think it has four megabytes of flash and then two megabytes of PS RAM. So this is version with PS RAM. Uh, it also has a USB to serial converter chip and a USB socket. It was a NeoPixel and like a boot button and reset button. It's a, it's a minimal version of an ESP32 development board with all the breakouts. Um, one thing I'll mention is the ESP32 has native USB but that is that USB port is not the native USB port, that's the debug port. So you'll have to get a USB connector and wire it up separately to use this with like CircuitPython or Arduino when you want to use the native USB connection. But this is a very low cost, easy way to get started with development on the ESP32 S2. Uh, there's some Arduino support, there's C, C++ support through the ESP IDF, and of course we're working on CircuitPython support. Likewise, this week is a week of twinsies. Everything has like, there's two versions. This is the other ESP32 development board. This is the Kaluga. Um, the Kaluga is kind of like a more fully featured dev board. It's also a little bit more expensive. It still has the ESP32 S2, but it has all these extras. It has like, uh, I think a I2S amplifier and a speaker. It has a camera, so you can use the camera peripheral. It's got a, a 3.2 inch TFT. It's got a lot more buttons. Uh, it's got uh, this capacitive touch, um, you know, interface board that you can connect. Um, so you get a lot more with it. Uh, and especially if you want to play with all the uh, hardware peripherals like I2S or capacitive touch or camera, this dev board, it's, it's got everything. So this is, you know, very fulfilling. And the other one is just a light snack. Okay. Next up. Okay. So this is now... Um, a collection of boards. I'm going to make, make a little bit of space here because for a while, actually, you know, we were, I think when you, you were talking about like Chuck E. Cheese or something, I don't remember how this started. And you were like, oh, I remember like Chuck E. Cheese had all those robots and they were pneumatic. Yeah, I, I, yeah, th I did that. But there was also another thing. When we came up with Cricket, I didn't know where we came up with Cricket too. I don't yeah. know in New York City. Um, I thought it would be a good idea to have 
um, a robotics platform where you can become an Imagineer in a box. Oh, yeah. And one of the tricks that Disney does is they project with a light projector onto something like a face shape. So you don't need to have a robot, you know, trying to talk. You just project the image on something. And I thought, oh, it'd be kind of cool to project uh, my face on a balloon. It would look like my mouth. And then I had Cricket um, spin a motor and blow bubbles. It's available on YouTube. You can see it. Thanks yeah. for coming to my TED Talk. Okay. <laughs> um, but that was one of the things that we wanted was a, a robotics board that you'd use Python. So you can use REPL. So you can do things really fast. And tweak things so you could do things like have a balloon blow up and then have something turn on and off and then have a bubble wand dip into the bubble solution and blow bubbles. So. Yeah, you asked me how to inflate and deflate a balloon. I said, actually, there's kind of nothing out there that makes this easy. Um, pneumatics is, you know, we see people who do uh, pneumatic robotics projects. They've come by show and tell and they're, they're super awesome. But it's always been kind of challenging. It, it, the parts are expensive or they're hard to get. Um, so we wanted to find a good supplier of low-cost pneumatic slash robotic components so that people can get started with like air-controlled projects um, with, you know, pumps and valves and switches and, and connectors that are really easy to use. So I don't know anything about pneumatics. And I put together this really simple demo in only like 15 minutes and you saw the little video before. So yeah. um, let's go through all the components and then I'll show the demo. So first up we have... Uh, a 1.8 liter per minute uh, vacuum pump, like uh, air air pump. So this um, this device has a DC motor, and it's a 4.5 volt DC motor. And I got that because basically it can power with like about five volts, um, which is what the Cricut runs off of. And it's also if you have servos, you're running up the same voltage. Air comes in through the side valve, and out through the end valve. So it's both a vacuum because the air is coming in from the side and out through the end. And if you reverse the polarity of the connectors to the DC motor, it doesn't go the other way. Like it really is, air only comes in from the side and out through, um, uh, through the end. So this is for you know air, air pump usage only, it's not for water, it's not for oil, it's only for air. Uh, you can do about 1.8 liters per minute, it draws about half an amp. Um, so you can use it either for suction or for blowing, right? You can do either one you could theoretically use both, but like one has to be free for the air to move so it can generate pressure. Okay, next up, we have a larger version of the same motor. This is a, I think, 2.5 liter per minute version. Also, um, 4.5 volts, you can run it at 5 volts just fine. Same deal. Air comes in the side and goes out the end. Okay, so now you've got like your battery, right? You've got your voltage slash pressure generator. For your pneumatics and so now you have to be able to like turn it on and off so you can turn the motor on and off but like it doesn't like that's not going to stop air from leaking through you actually need a air valve so the air valve this is a relay basically for pneumatics so this device has three um sorry it has three uh ports there's uh two end ports and one side port and the side port is like the common of a relay and then depending on whether you turn the, the solenoid on or off the middle common port is connected to either side and the opposite side is closed so air doesn't come in or out so it's kind of like like a like a transistor or a relay for air um, and then you would hook this up to um, your voltage your pump your pressure generator and you could redirect the air in different uh, locations, or you can use it as a release valve, right? You close it to keep pressure or then open it and you can just vent or out. So uh, this little relay also runs at around five volts um, and it has a little connector on the end. It's like a 2.5 JST or something like that. Um, and uh, you can see here on the other end, the third port. So this is your valve that you can use for turning things on and off. Next up, you might have to make manifolds or connect multiple pieces to be together. So we've got these T-connects. Um, these are just simple plastic pieces. In fact, I kind of uh, cannibalized one of these to make the balloon connector because I needed something that the balloon could like grip onto. So you get a pack of five, and uh, I think you could probably turn this into just like, you know, an a end-to-end -end connector by just maybe putting some epoxy or glue in, in the, middle, uh, uh, the middle of the T. 
but it basically allows you to create manifolds or redirect air um, into multiple different locations with your air pump. So this is like a little, like a little mini breadboard basically for uh, hydraulics. And then you need the wiring. So for that, we've got this silicone tubing um, that fits onto all the different ports and it's nice and snug. Uh, it's silicone, but it's not food safe. Uh, it's only meant for these air projects. I think it's like two millimeter inner diameter or something like five millimeter outer diameter. Either way, it's easy to cut. It's silicone, it's flexible, it's stretchy. Uh, it works great for these projects. Okay, so let's go to the overhead and see if I can show this demo. So I've got this pump and uh, as I mentioned before, um, the side pump is suction. So air only comes in here and goes out here and this is open because that way I can suck air out of the balloon and into the atmosphere and it can generate that pressure. And for this one, you'll see I have the pump air going this way, right? Because air comes in and goes out. So this one is going to be able to inflate the balloon. And then in the middle, I have a valve and the valve is what switches the air from the pump or the vacuum into the balloon. All right, so you ready for this demo? Yeah. Let's do this thing. So it's gonna take a second to start up. Okay, so this pump is going and it's gonna inflate the balloon for like five to 10 seconds. And you, you time this so you know, it's not just gonna keep going forever. No, 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 and then it stops and then now it's holding it. And then this pump activates and it deflates. So it's sucking the air out of the balloon and you can see it actually takes all the air out and then the other pump starts up again. So if you're making inflatables projects with, you know, uh, balloons or pneumatics or I don't know, like air-based projects, this kind of is all you need to get started. This is like your little kit. Yeah. And you can use a Cricut. I, I think you'll be able to do a lot of you know, neat science stuff. You'll be able to do a lot of neat uh, animatronics. You'll be able to do a lot of art. Um, this is one of the hardest things. And uh, this is where I, you know, we came up with the idea a while back, like, wouldn't it be great to be able to get, like, all the, the Disney, Imag Disney Imagineer type stuff in one spot? So this just continues on that cricket and the cricket. Yeah, and this uh, is nice. You don't, need a compress really well. you don't need a compressor. All runs on five volts, so Cricut, which is a five volt uh, robotics device, you can see the pumps are controlled by the motor driver, and then the relay is controlled by the uh, solenoid driver, so yeah. it's perfect. Here's a fun thing to consider, you know, a lot of theme parks might be a little different, and you might have some more at home time. Why not build your own animatronic theme park in the garage? That's right. Okay, Star Street tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, and our community, and all of our customers, and our team is... This, hold on, I have to switch gears now because that was, that was like a, a big a big changeover. Yeah. Um, so this is a new Featherwing. This is, uh, people really love our OLED Featherwing that has uh, 120 by 32 pixels. We've upgraded it. Now we found a display that fits perfectly, perfectly on top. And it's 128 by 64 pixels. It's monochrome. And uh, it still has the three buttons. It's still I squared C. Um, we've got an Arduino library for it. We don't quite yet have CircuitPython for it, um, but that's coming soon. So uh, just be aware if you want to use it with CircuitPython or Python, that code is not uh, available yet. Uh, but it's a beautiful uh, display and it's got, again, twice as many pixels. So that's kind of nice. And on the bottom, we even added a Stemma QT connector. I'll get nice and close. Um, so you can, maybe I'll show it off carefully. So um, you got the uh, display over here, a STEM QT connector. So you can connect any I squared C device uh, you like, uh, such as a sensor or like a air quality sensor or a relay or what have you, um, or an ADC. So plugging this into my feather. Okay, and then I'm going to plug this in. I can show that demo where we have, oh, sit down. We have a uh, no solder temperature humidity display using our HT20. Um, just plug it in and I wrote some Arduino code to um, use this nice font, display the temperature and humidity. So uh, chain as many sensors as you like. It's a great uh, pairing for our 50 plus demo boards and uh, it's a beautiful uh, OLED display. It's a big display with lots of pixels. Uh, and it's a perfect match for all of our feathers. So for folks who've been like, I want a bigger feather wing display, 
you got it. All right, with that, 